If you've watched any TV at all in the last six months, you've seen a million commercials about Apple intelligence. But I keep picking up my iPhone and iPad, thinking something intelligent is going to happen, and then, you know, nothing intelligent happens. Then I learned that Apple's been rolling this out pretty slowly, and not only that, I learned that Apple Intelligence only works on iPads with the M1 chip or later M series chips, or the iPad mini with the A17 chip. So that's a no-go on my wife's ninth gen iPad with that big round home button, which by the way is still working perfectly. Anyway, I do have an iPad Pro because I make a bunch of YouTube videos, so I decided to find a few simple ways to use Apple Intelligence. That's what this video is all about. Hi, my name is Rich and I continue to make simple videos on how to use your iPhone and iPad without going nuts, so much so that my daughter made me this mug. And if easy to follow videos are your thing, then please consider subscribing. We've got a great catalog of videos that so many of you have found helpful. We're growing and I'd love to have you join us on this journey. There are a whole lot of Apple intelligence features, but in today's video, I'm just going to cover five simple ways to use Apple intelligence. First up is Genmojis, which is kind of a playful thing. It's not, you know, super important, but it is fun to use in messages. I want to talk about a smarter Siri, and we couldn't get there soon enough, right? Next is rewriting text messages in a tone that might be a little better suited for what you're trying to say. Then I'm going to talk about writing tools in Apple Notes. And then I'm going to talk about photo cleanup, which is probably my favorite new feature and the one I'll use the most. By the way, in this video, I'm running iPadOS 18.3. Okay, let's get started. Okay, the first thing I want to talk to you about is just Genmojis. So you've probably heard of emojis, which are little round faces and uh, little cartoon type characters. But Genmojis are something where the iPad will actually create a unique emoji for you. So we'll start by opening messages. And I've got it open to send myself a message here. I'm going to tap on the emoji icon. And in the past, this is where you would pick an emoji. But if you notice, you've got a little emoji over here with the Apple Intelligence colors kind of glowing right there. If you tap on that, you can now just describe what you want the emoji to be. So I'm going to just tap the little microphone and dictate this. Rich riding a horse. And if you'll notice, it says choose a person. Now, you'd think my iPad would know Rich is me, and occasionally it does when I've tested this out, but sometimes it doesn't. And when it doesn't, you can just tap choose a person, and here my picture will pop up. So we'll just click done for using that as a starting point, and here we go, I'm riding a horse. And you can scroll through and it'll just keep uh, adding different images for you as you go until you find the one that you like. And then you can just maybe this one, tap on it. And now you've got an emoji of me riding a horse. And that is a Genmoji. Not the most earth shattering feature in the world, but it's kind of fun. One thing I do want to say about this is that Apple Intelligence recognizes products and it won't put products in there, uh, I guess for copyright purposes. So let me show you what I mean. Rich holding an iPad. And if you'll see what it says, no results. So if you put iPad or Rich wearing a Superman outfit, stuff like that that's copyrighted, it will not create an image. It has to be something somewhat generic. So that kind of takes the edge off of it, but I understand why they do that. But that's how you use Genmojis. Next up, I want to talk to you about a smarter Siri. So let me show you what I mean. In the past, you could only give one command, and that's what she would understand. But now you can sort of change your command mid sentence. So rather than saying, hey, followed by her name, and then triggering every iPad and iPhone around the world, I'm just going to use my little button here on the side. I'm going to press it. Set an alarm for 8 AM. No, make that 9 a.m. And there, you can see you've followed up with the second command and Siri has figured it out. 
So that is a new way that you can talk to Siri. And I've found that it works in some contexts and it doesn't work in others. And I know Apple is trying to perfect that. But that's an example of how you can give one command followed by a change in that command the next go around. Next thing I want to talk to you about is just how to double tap to bring up Siri. So I'm going to double tap right there at the bottom, kind of in the middle. And I'll say, how do I change iPad wallpaper? And then I hit the little arrow right there. And now Siri will tell you how to change the wallpaper on your iPad. And what's even better about this is that you didn't have to go searching through everything. It gives, she gives you the instructions right here, but if you tap on the instructions, it actually takes you to the manual um, of how you can customize the wallpaper in the iPad in greater detail. So it's a great little way to learn how to use your iPad by just asking Siri questions. And of course, you can ask Siri complex questions Who invented the steam engine? And so you have information right there and you can just tap on it and it'll give you the information very quickly like that. And you also have links down here. So if you want to tap on Wikipedia, it'll open Wikipedia to the steam engine page. So it's just a handy way to use Siri to get information. Next thing I want to talk to you about is just changing the tone or the tenor of the way your messages come across in text messaging. So let me show you how that works. I'm going to tap on messages and I'm going to write a message and then I'm going to change the tone of it using Apple intelligence. You need to get the brakes fixed on your Lexus period. I'm concerned that you may get involved in a wreck if you don't get them replaced. So that's the text message that I want to send. Now how you can change the tone of that is you can double tap, select the message, go to writing tools, and I'm going to say let's make it a friendly tone. And look what it says. Hey, I noticed your Lexus needs some brake work. I'm worried you might get into an accident if you, if you don't get them fixed soon. I'll revert back. And I'll tap on them again, and we'll go to writing tools again, and we'll do a little more professional voice. It's imperative that you have your Lexus brakes repaired promptly. Failure to do so may result in an accident. So you get the idea. You can change the tone of your messages, and that's often important because sometimes we write text messages in a tone that we don't really mean when we send it on and it gets interpreted the wrong way. But it's just a way to use uh, Apple intelligence to sort of take the rough edges off or to make it a little more precise. It's all up to you. But that's one way to use writing tools in text messages. Next up is I want to show you how to use an example of writing tools in Apple Notes. Now I keep a lot of information in Apple Notes. Sometimes I put medical reports in Apple Notes. I put manuals from uh, appliances and things like that in Apple Notes. And now with Apple Intelligence, you can go in and get summaries. You can get different bits of information sussed out of all of the writing in a way that helps you figure out what's going on. And let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to open up Apple Notes. I've got it open to a note here about Ohio State's recent win in the national championship college football playoff. And I'm just going to tap this is an article, by the way, that I got off the web. So I'm just going to tap on it. And I'm going to select all of it. And then I'm going to tap Writing Tools again. And here I can get a summary of everything that's right here. And maybe you have a multi-page article that you're just wanting a summary on. But if you tap Summary, It'll summarize it for you in a paragraph just like that. And you can copy that and you can paste that down in the note as a summary of the article. Likewise, you can go back and you can ask for key points. And if you tap on key points, 
it gives you the key points of this article right here. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to tap and hold. And I'll paste. And now I have the key points of the paragraph above. I think where this is going to be useful for me is where I have a bunch of medical information and I'm wanting to summarize it. Uh, but it will work with any type of article that you want to summarize. Again, the method is simply to choose the text. I'm going to click Select All. I'm going to go to Writing Tools. And I'm going to say, let's give me a concise report of this. And it'll go through all of it right there. And now it has rewritten the whole thing in a concise voice, just like that. Now, if you want to go back to what you had before, you can just hit revert right here, and you're back to where you were before. This is going to be one of those tools that after I get the hang of using it, I suspect I'll be using more and more. Okay, last up is photo cleanup. This is really a clever thing, and I think this is probably what I'll be using the most, at least in the beginning because I'm always taking photos with my iPhone and sometimes the pictures don't turn out the way I want them to. I wish I would have had something uh, in the shot or out of the shot or something like that. And this is a way to clean those up. So I'm going to go into Photos and I'm going to choose a photo, let's say, of Justin right here. So we're at a little restaurant and we can see the waitress in the background. I kind of wish that I had not gotten the waitress in the background. She was walking by right as I took the shot. But if you go down here to the little edit icon and tap on it, and then you go over to clean up and tap on clean up, it automatically chooses her and then you can just tap on it. And like that, gone. And then you can click done. And now you've removed her that easily. I think that's just absolutely amazing. Likewise, you can take another shot like this, and here I've got a shot of Cooper and my wife in the background, but I actually kind of didn't get her face in this one, so I'm just going to get rid of all of her. So I'm going to tap on this, I'm going to do clean up, and then I'm going to come over with my finger, and I'm just going to kind of make an outline of where I want it to be, and just like that, gone. Isn't that amazing? And it looks really good. It's like Cooper was just uh, hopping up on the, the fence there by himself. That's a great way to do it. I'll cancel. I'll bring that back. You, you can always discard the changes and bring everything back if you want. You know, another example uh, I have is Justin with his other grandmother right here. And if we go into edit and then clean up, and then I just kind of do that. It knows right there to take it out. And look how nicely it filled in the grass and the little clippings and things like that. Absolutely amazing. And that's how you use photo cleanup. And I think that's just a really killer Apple intelligence feature. So there you have it. My sense is that I'll not use these new AI features all the time, but rather I'll grow to use them more and more over time, especially after I get the hang of them. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.